So happy that we could uh, get this next gentleman on. I mean, he had requested that, you know, get Ruko out before, but, you know, Ruko insisted on saying, so yes. Ruko's going to stay. But uh, Stephen A. Smith, our good buddy, joins hey. us now. What's up, Stephen A.? What's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? We miss seeing your pretty <laughs> face here, man. I, I don't want to get contentious and, uh, right out of the box here, but I need to know I, why. Right. He stopped following all of us on Twitter. Yeah, he unfollowed that's us that's all. That's a bad job. Job. That All of a sudden, I pop on Twitter. Where's my friend? Where's my buddy? Where's my former co-worker, man? Here you go, start in trouble. What <laughs> happened was is that the, the, tr- the Twitter account that I had when I switched devices, all of a sudden I turn around and wake up one day, and it literally had me following 500 people. And so what happened is that I tried to delete following everybody, and and then that way I could start it up on my own. I don't know what it did. I don't know who it dropped <laughs> or who it erased or whatever the case may be. I don't know how to do this stuff. Don't pay attention to that, but it is what it is. I told you, he's just technologically illiterate. Well, that's, well but you know what? He, he's, he's got it going on every other way. He's, yeah. His show is on Sirius XM. Yep. And we miss you here. We really yeah. do, buddy. And I, I hope you're happy and doing well. I miss, well. I miss I, I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm doing well. No doubt about it. But I still miss my friends. Y'all will always be family to me. You know that. So that's why I'm here right now. All right. So who's going to win the NBA title? I'm picking the Clippers, Mike. How come? I really am. I mean, I mean listen, I know the San Antonio Spurs are the best team right now. They're the reigning defending champions, the experience, et cetera, et cetera. But I just think this is the year of the Clippers. And believe it or not, um, I just finished interviewing uh, CP3, and, and I pointed out that I think Spencer Hoard is the biggest reason why. If you look at the Clippers, <clears throat> you got CP3, you got Blake Griffin, you got the Reddicks and Jamal Crawford to the world. They seem to have everything. The problem with having DeAndre Jordan in the lineup in the fourth quarter was that he only shot 42% from the free throw line. He had no perimeter shot to speak of, and therefore he was useless on the perimeter, so he had to sit in the lane. He clogged the lane, and he got in the way of their offense and its offensive efficiency. You get a guy like Spencer Hawes out there, which Ryan could speak to because he called some of these games last year. The bottom line is Spencer Hawes is a seven-footer that gets to step away from the basket and be a threat from the perimeter on that level. And I think that's going to bode very, very well for the Los Angeles Clippers because it's going to free Blake Griffin up to do damage in the post, and it's going to free Chris Paul up to do what he does in terms of penetrating into the lane and getting shots for open shooters because you're going to have to pay attention to him more. I think those things are going to bode well for the Los Angeles Clippers, and I think this is the year that they're going to get over that hump and do some damage. Are the Spurs still their biggest threat? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's deniable. Uh, Tim Duncan, Monica Ginobili with Greg Popovich coaching them with Tony Parker and those boys, they know what they're doing. They've been raving about this kid, Kyle Anderson, this rookie. Um, they like him a lot. We'll see what happens. But I don't think that Popovich is going to successfully be able to manage their minutes the way that he did last year. Not a single one of them played more than 30 minutes a game. That's why they were so fresh for the postseason. I don't know if that happens this time around this year, especially against the Clippers. I just don't see it. Stephen, have you gotten any kind of inkling as to how Russell Westbrook feels about getting this opportunity to play a couple of months without Kevin Durant? Man, I'm told he's salivating at the, at the mouth for, for this one, man. I, he's loving it because, you know, he, he doesn't mind Kevin Durant as somebody he loves dearly, and we all know that Kevin Durant's a big-time player, probably the second-best player in the NBA. But you're Russell Westbrook. You are supremely confident in yourself. He's unstoppable offensively, as you well know. He may be erratic, but it's not like somebody can stop him. And so I think he's using it as an opportunity to really showcase his skill set and him being that franchise caliber player. Because keep in mind, both he and Kevin Durant are going to be free agents within the next two years. And as a result, Russell Westbrook is looking, is possibly looking to go back home to L.A., and Kevin Durant is possibly looking to move on to either Washington or New York. And so because of it, Russell Westbrook is going to look at this as an opportunity to validate his greatness as an individual as an individual franchise caliber player, and I think he's going to take the bull by the horn and put on the show. We're talking with our good buddy Stephen A. Smith. He has his show on Sirius XM. You can see him on all the ESPN platforms as well. Stephen A., you mentioned the Knicks. You mentioned New York. Uh, Forty and a half is the number in Vegas. Are they going to win more or less than that? 
I got the Knicks winning about 42 games. I think Phil Jackson, his system, and Derek Fisher are good for five games. Five games better than they were last year. I like the fact that they're, they're talking about doing something with Amon Shumpert or J.R. Smith because they clearly want to have Tim Hardaway Jr. having, you know, play, getting more playing time. They said that. From the moment the season was over, we've got to find a way to get this kid more playing time. They really, really love his upside. You look at Carmelo Anthony. You know what he's going to bring you. I think he can still bring you what he's been bringing you. You look at Amari Stoudemire. Nobody anticipated that he was going to be able to do but so much last year. He, I think he's good for 14 or 15 points a game. I think that's going to help you. And I think as a result, they're going to be more potent offensively, especially with Jose Calderon as their, as their point guard now, instead of Mr. Third Stringer himself, Raymond Felton, because that's what he is now in Dallas. So as a result of all of that, I just look at the New York Knicks being able to win about five more games. But that's about it. I think they go into the – they finish the season about 42 and 40. They make the playoffs as a seventh or eighth seed, and they go home after a first-round uh, experience against Cleveland or Chicago.